But not far away, the weapons of destruction are being prepared. The targets are fixed, aim is taken on the heartland. And for the Thanksgiving turkey, there will be no day after. <laughs> he missed it, didn't he? <laughs> he did indeed, but he's not talking turkey anyway. This is a turkey shoot, but the targets are only paper. Still, the winner does get a live turkey, and after that... I would assume it gets eaten. <laughs> The turkey shoot is just part of the Thanksgiving observance in this lovingly recreated slice of New England circa 1830. To visit Old Sturbridge is to walk with the ghosts of a simpler time. In the spirit of the season, many are giving thanks, like the visitor from out of town. We just got through going through the house where they had to bake all day long to uh, just get enough food on the table probably for one meal. It makes you think that uh, what we have today is, is quite gratifying. Thank you. You notice I did hit it. 50% of my shots are successful every time. Quaint it is here, but we don't want to imply Sturbridge is hopelessly out of date. There is industry, the lumber industry, the garment industry, the dairy industry, even the entertainment industry. Quaint it is until quitting time. <laughs> I have an all-electric home with aluminum siding. It's warmer. <laughs> Bob Olson may have a point. It is rustic, but... It's a little too rustic. I'm too used to pushing buttons and um, having a, a good time with uh, modern things rather than being back in these times. It's a good thing the Lord saved me for the 20th century because I wouldn't have made it through any of these others. <laughs> so even if modern life isn't exactly a bowl of cherries, take a good close look at the past, and you too will be giving thanks. It, this time it might make me a biggest noise. Uh oh. Oh no. Uh oh. What do you know about it? Nobody knows much about it. He's rich, got a big plantation on a hill, tons of fishing. What's he doing out here? The story goes that he had to beat it out of France some 15, 16 years ago. Nobody seems to know much why. How about taking me on your mission with you this time? Who says I'm on any mission? My mistake? Your mistake. grass skirts were made by myself, the professor, and Stupot, 
and three other CBs in half the time it takes your native workers to make them. See? No stretch. Look them over, sweaty pie, and uh, give me a prize. All hand tied. All right, now what do you say, Sweatso? What am I offered? Gee, pretty nice work. Did you hear that? You can probably sell these to the chumps for five or six dollars a piece. Now let's make a quick deal. I'll let you have the whole batch for, say, um, 80 bucks. Give you ten dollar. What? <laughs> now see here, dragon lady, you... Hey, what's that you got there? A boar's tooth bracelet? Where'd you get that? Over there on Valley High? You like? Hey, come here. Come here. You don't run into these things every day. <laughs> They're scarce as hen's teeth. They're bigger, too. <laughs> that darn ballet high. Why does it have to be off limit? You can get everything over there. Shrunken heads, bracelets. Only officers can sign out boats. I'll get a boat all right. I'll latch on to some officer who's got some imagination. Who would like to see that boar's tooth ceremonial as much as I would. It's a pip of a ceremonial. Dancing, drinking, everything. Why, you big phony. We all know why you want to go to Bally High. Yeah? Why? Because the French planters put the young women over there when they heard the G.I.s were coming. That's why. Just as if they didn't trust us. The trouble with you is, ain't boys, teeth. It's women. It is boar's teeth. And women. Sunlight on the sand, we got moonlight on the sea. We got mangoes and bananas we can pick right off a tree. We got volleyball and ping pong and a lot of dandy games. What ain't we got? We ain't got dandy. We get packages from home. We get movies, we get shows. We get speeches from our skipper and advice from Tokyo Road. We get letters doused with perfume. We get dizzy from the smell. What? Don't we get, you know damn well. We got nothing to put on a clean white suit for. What we need is what there ain't no substitute for. There is nothing like a day. We feel blue, we feel lonely and in brief. We feel every kind of feeling, but the feeling of relief. We feel hungry as the wolf felt when he met Red Riding Hood. What don't we feel? We don't feel good. Lots of things in life are beautiful, but, brother, there is one particular thing that is nothing whatsoever in any way, shape, or form like any other. and wavy frame like a silhouette of a day. There is absolutely nothing like the frame of a day. Hello. 
forward. Have you done what you promised? Yes, Miss Forward. I did it all last night. Uh, uh, you don't have to open it now. Oh! Well, you do beautiful work, Luther. Gosh, I guess I'm just about the luckiest nurse on this island who found you. You're a treasure. nurses the officers can have. They got him. Well, they can have him. So suppose a dame ate bright or completely free from flaws or as faithful as a bird dog or as kind as Santa Claus. It's a waste of time to worry over things that they have not. Be thankful for the things they've got. <laughs> for me? Huh? Are you crummy nature? No, I'm even crummier than that. I'm a lieutenant. Lieutenant? Lieutenant. Hiya, lieutenant. You on the road? Just flew in on that PBY. Where from? Little island south of Marie Louise. Hey, Lieutenant. You sexy man. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, you're looking pretty, uh, fit yourself. Who's she? Uh, nobody. She's on her knees. You got sweetheart? Take home Chicago to Saxy sweetheart. Oh, no. She's a Philadelphia girl. I doubt that she'd quite appreciate. What's that Philadelphia girl? What's that mean? No Saxy? <laughs> you like I give you free. Free? You never give me anything free. You know sexy like Nutella. <laughs> Take. No, thanks. Where'd you get that, anyway? Bali High.
Sheegan Little Island, ain't it, Lieutenant? Officers can get launches and go over there. Valley High. What's that mean? Valley High means I am your special island. Mean here I am. Valley High, your special island, do tell him. I know. You listen, you hear Island call to you. Listen. You know here's something.
now, uh, that island is off limits. Of course, uh, you being an officer, you could get a launch. I'd even be willing to requisition the boat for you. <laughs> well, another thing goes on over there. The uh, ceremonial of the boars, too. After they kill the boar, they pass around some of that uh, coconut liquor. And women uh, dance with just skirts on. And everybody gets to know everybody pretty well. And I thought uh, you being up in the shooting war for such a long time without getting any uh, recreation, uh, thought you might be interested. I'm Billy. Here she is, sir. You are causing an economic revolution on this island. These French planters can't find a native to pick a coconut or milk a cow because you're paying them ten times as much to make these ridiculous grass skirts. French planter stinky stinker. Like you, crummy captain. I want you to pick up every scrap of this paraphernalia now. And for the last time, carry it way down there, beyond that pier, off Navy property. All right, you men. Take this stuff down there past that pier. Snap to it. Who is he? Don't know, sir. All right, all right, all right. Come on, come on, let's go. Get it down there. Let's go, let's go. Come on, come on. Way down there. Off Navy property. You go, too. All right, Lieutenant. Thank you. Lieutenant? Who are you, anyway? Lieutenant Joseph Cable, sir. I just flew in on that PBY. A joyride? No, sir. Orders. A Marine under orders to me? Yes, sir. This is Commander Harbison, my executive officer. Commander? Lieutenant Cable? Well, what's it all about? Well, sir, my colonel feels that all these islands are in danger because none of us has been getting any first-hand intelligence. We don't know what the Japanese are really up to. He couldn't be more right. He feels that what we need is a coast watch. A coast watch? Yes, sir. One of our men with a radio hiding out on one of the enemy-held islands where he could watch for enemy ships when they come down through the bottleneck. Down this way. What do you think, Bill? Well, sir, our pilots could do a lot of damage to enemy convoys with information like that. How would you get a man on one of those islands? Have to sneak him ashore somehow, sir. How long do you think he could hold out there sending messages before the Japanese spotted him? It could be done, sir. Yeah, but who's going to do it? Well, sir, I've been elected. You got yourself quite an assignment, son. I think I'd be okay if I could take a man with me who really knew the country. Headquarters has found out that there's a French civilian here. Used to have a plantation on Marie Louise Island. Did a lot of hunting and fishing there. Marie Louise. That's a good spot. Right on the bottleneck. What's this Frenchman's name? Emile de Beck. Ah. He lives right up there. Yes, sir. Do you know him? Well, I've met him, but I don't know very much about him yet. Is all this yours? Yes. Yes. Is it true that all the planters on these islands, are they really running away from something? Who is 
was not running away from something. There are fugitives everywhere. New York, in Paris, even in Small Rock. Yeah, where you come from. Oh, little Rock. Oh, Little. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Small Rock. <laughs> little Rock. Oh. You know any fugitives there? I'll show you a picture of a Little Rock fugitive. I got this clipping from my mother today. Hey. <laughs> Enzin Nelly Forbush. Arkansas' own Florence Nightingale. That was written by Mrs. Leeming, the social editor. Mm. She went to school with my mother. Pretty girl, huh? That picture was taken before I knew what rain and heat and mud can do to your disposition. But it isn't raining today. Gosh, it's beautiful here. Just look at that yellow sun. And away off in the distance, those lovely little white clouds. Those lovely little white clouds could easily be gunfire. Oh, how awful. On such a day, boys getting killed, people getting. But you know, Emil, I don't think it's the end of the world like everyone else thinks. Do you? Perhaps the end of some worlds. Mm, not this one. It can't be. I, I can't work myself up to getting that low. You think I'm crazy too? Well, they all do over at the Fleet Hospital. You know what they call me? Knucklehead Nelly. <laughs> I suppose I am. But I can't help it. When the sky is a bright canary yellow, I forget every cloud I've ever seen. So they call me a cockeyed optimist, immature and incurably green. I have heard people rant and rave and bellow that we're done and we might as well be dead. And I can't get it into my head I hear the human race is falling on its face And hasn't very far to go But every whippoorwill is selling me a bill And telling me it just ain't so I could say life is just a bowl of jello and appear more intelligent and smart. But I'm stuck like a dope with a thing called hope, and I can't get it out of my heart. Not this You want to know anything else about me? Yes. Would you like to see the view? Mm. You say you are a fugitive. When you joined the Navy, what were you running away from? Gosh, I don't know. It was more like running to something. I wanted to see what the world was like, outside of Little Rock, I mean, and I wanted to meet different kinds of people and find out if I liked them better. And do you? Well, I, I, I don't really know yet, I guess. They're different. Would you like some cognac? I'd love some. I need 
This is what I've longed for. Someone young and smiling, climbing up my hill. We are not alike. Probably I'd bore him. He's a cultured Frenchman. I'm a little hick. Younger men than I, officers and doctors, probably pursue her. She could have her pick. Wonder why I feel cheery and jumpy. I am like a schoolgirl waiting for a dance. Can I ask her now? I am like a schoolboy. What will be her answer? Do I have a comes once a month. The ladies, the wives of the planters, often go to Australia during the hot months. It can get very hot here. Oh, it can get hot in Arkansas, too. It can? Uh-huh. I have many books here. Marcel Proust. Anatole France. Did you study French in school? Oh, yes. Then you can read French. No. I can conjugate a few verbs. I'll bet you read a lot. Out here, one becomes hungry to learn everything, not to miss anything. Not to let anything go. Let's buy. Yes? One waits so long for what is good. And when at last it comes, one cannot risk to lose. So one must speak and act quickly, even if it seems almost foolish to be so quick. I know it's only two weeks. A dinner given at your officer's club, wasn't it? Yes, it was, Emil. And that is the way things happen sometimes. Isn't it, Nelly? Yes, it is, Emil. Some enchanted evening, you may see a stranger. You may see a stranger across a crowded room And somehow you know You know even then That somewhere you'll see her again and again Enchanted evening, someone may be laughing, you may hear her laughing across a crowded room, and 
night after night As strange as it seems The sound of her laughter will sing in your dreams Who can explain it? Who can tell you why fools give you reasons wise men never the bag. La jeep de mademoiselle est ici. La jeep de mademoiselle. Votre jeep. Oh! Oh, my jeep! Thanks, Henry. Tell him I'll be right there. Goodbye, Emil. I, I had such a lovely time. I... Before you leave, Maggie, I want to tell you something. A while ago, you asked me a question. Why did I leave France? Oh, Emil, that was not... But I want to tell you. I had to leave France. I killed a man. Why did you kill him? He was a wicked man. The town bully. Everyone in our village was glad to see him die. And it was not to my discredit. Do you believe me, Nelly? You... You just told me that you killed a man, and that it's all right. I hardly know you. And yet I know it's all right. Thank you, Nelly. And you like my place? Yes. You... you will think? I will think. Mademoiselle. Merci, monsieur. Nous chantons bien aussi. 
Ah oui? Attends, papa. Attends, papa. Dites-moi pourquoi la vie est belle. Dites-moi pourquoi la vie est belle. some dope on your Frenchman. Had a plantation on Marie Louise Island, moved down here to this island 16 years ago, married to a Polynesian woman for about five years, two children by her, she died. Here's one thing we've got to clear up. Seems he left France in a hurry, killed a guy. What do you think of that? Might be a handy man to have around. Cable. Good. Send her in. Here she is. Oh, come in, Miss Fallbush. Captain Brackett, please excuse the way I look. I, I, I was just... Oh, you look fine. May I present Commander Harbison? I have the pleasure of meeting Miss Forbush twice a week. We served together on the GI Entertainment Committee. How's the Thanksgiving Entertainment coming along? Very well, thank you, sir. We, we practice whenever we get a chance. May I also present Lieutenant Joseph Cable, Miss Forbush. Sit down, Miss Forbush. Miss Forbush, you've been seeing a French planter, Emile de Beck. Yes, sir. Uh, what do you know about him? Well, uh... Uh, what do I know about him? That's right. Well, I, uh... We met at the officers' club dance. He was there. And I met him. Yes. Now, what kind of a man is he? Well, uh... He's very nice. He's kind. He's attractive. I just don't know what you want to know, sir. Miss Forbush, Captain Brackett wants to know, did you discuss politics? No, sir. Would you have discussed politics, Commander? What we're specifically interested in is, uh, well, when these fellows come out from France, it's generally because they've had some trouble. Has he ever told you anything about that? Well, uh, what do you know about his family, for instance? Oh, uh, he has no family. No wife, nobody. He doesn't have any children? No, sir. And you say he's never told you why he left France? Yes, sir. He left France because he killed a man. Did he tell you why? No, but he will if I ask him. Well, Miss Forbush, that's exactly what we'd like to have you do. Find out as much about him as you can. His background, his opinions, and why he killed this man in France. In other words, you want me to spy on him? Well, I'm afraid it is something like that. Why? Do you suspect him of anything? No. It's just that we don't know very much about him, and he's... Will you help us, Miss Forbush? I'll try. Thank you. You may go now, if you wish. I don't know very much about him, really. Do I? He 
he's kept a few secrets from her, hasn't he? Well, you don't spring a couple of Polynesian kids on a woman right off the bat. I'm afraid we aren't going to get much out of her. She's obviously in love with him. Well, that's hard to believe, sir. They tell me he's a middle-aged man. Cable? It is a common mistake for boys of your age and athletic ability to underestimate men who have reached their maturity. Sir, I didn't mean... Young women frequently find a grown man attractive. Strange as it may seem to you. I, myself, am over 50. I am a bachelor. And Cable, I do not by any means consider myself through. What's the matter, Bill? Nothing. Evidently. <laughs> okay, Cable, see you at Chow. Yes, sir. Anything for Ensign Forbush? Oh, uh, your mail, Miss Forbush. Oh, thanks, Luther. And, uh, your hot water's still waiting for you. Oh, thank you, Luther, you're sweet. Expression, Lieutenant. Uh, just act like we're talking casual. I got the boat. What boat? We're shoving off for Belly High in 45 minutes. What are you talking about? The project you and I got to go to Belly High. Oh, yeah. Well, you can forget it. <laughs> Lieutenant, what are you doing to me? I signed this boat out in your name. Well, then you're just the man to cancel it. Forget the whole thing. Okay, mate? Lieutenant, you and me are going on a boat trip whether you like it or not. Letter from home? Oh, yes. Do you get letters from your mother telling you that everything you do is wrong? No, my mother thinks everything I do is right. Of course, I don't tell her everything I do. My mother is so prejudiced. Against Frenchmen? Against anyone living outside Little Rock. She makes a big thing out of two people having different backgrounds. You mean ages? Oh, no. Mother says older men are better for girls than younger men. This has been a discouraging day for me. Suppose you had a sister, and she was in love with a man like... De Beck? I tell her to lay off. You don't have to worry about me anymore, because it's all off. With him? Uh-huh. Smart girl, Nellie. I'm going to break it off clean before it's too late. You think you can? Before I go any further, I just better not get started. Don't you think so, too, Gracie? Yes, I do. You do, huh? Yes. Well, I guess I do, too. Well, you don't have to look so dramatic about it. Things like this happen every day. I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair. I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair. I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair and send him on his way. Get the picture? I'm gonna wave that man right out of my arms. I'm gonna wave that man right out of my arms. I'm gonna wave that man right out of my arms and send him on his way. If the man don't understand you, if you fly. Waste no time, make a change, ride that man right off your range. Rub him out of the roll call and rum him out of your dreams. Oh -ho. Oh -ho. Oh. I went and washed that man right out of my 
hair. I went and washed that man right out of my hair. I went and washed that man right out of my hair and sent him on his way. Is it a new American song? Well, uh, uh, it's an American type song. We were just kind of, uh, uh, putting in our own words, you know. Uh, uh, where is everybody? I left a note for you at the hospital. It was to ask you to my home for dinner next Friday. Oh, uh... Well, Emil, I don't think I'll be able to come. You see, I have oh, these rehearsals. I have already invited some of my friends. The planters call them. Oh. Oh, a big party. Well, well, then if I can't come, you won't miss me. But it is for you. It is for my friends to meet you. And more important, for you to meet them. To give you an idea of what your life would be like here. I want you to know more about me, how I live and think. More about you? Yes. You know very little about me. That's right. Uh, would you sit down? Do you think about politics much? And if so, what do you think about politics? I... Do you mean... But do you mean my political philosophy? I think that's what I mean. Oh. <laughs> uh, well... To begin with, I... I believe in the free life in uh, freedom for everyone. Like in the Declaration of Independence. C'est ça. All men are created equal, isn't it? Emil, you really believe that? But of course, Nelly. Well, thank goodness. Oh. That's why I am here. Why, I killed a man. Oh, yes, I, uh... <clears throat> I meant to ask you about that, too. Now, uh... I don't want you to think I'm prying into your private life, asking a lot of personal questions, but, uh... I always think it's interesting why a person kills another person. But of course, Nelly. That has worded you. When I was a boy, I carried my heart in my hand. So, when this man came to our town, though my father said he was good, I thought he was bad. I was young. He attracted all the mean and cruel people to him. Soon he was running our town. He could do anything, take anything. I didn't like that. I was young. I stood up in the public square. I made a speech. I called upon everyone to stand with me against this man. What did they do? They walked away. Why? Because they saw him standing behind me. I turned. 
and he said to me, I'm going to kill you now. We fought. I was never so strong. I knocked him to the ground. And when he fell, his head struck a stone and I ran to the waterfront and joined the cargo boat. I didn't even know where it was going. I stepped off that boat into another world. Where I am now. And where I want to stay. Nelly, will you marry me? of my crowd to make fun of my proud protestations of faith in romance. And they'll say I'm naive as a babe to believe any fable I hear from a person in pants. a grand and a beautiful thing. I'm not ashamed to reveal the world famous feeling I feel. I'm as carny as Kansas in August. I'm as normal as blueberry. I, no more a smart little girl with no heart. I have found me a wonderful guy. I am in a conventional dither with a conventional star in my eye. And you will note there's a lump in my throat when I speak of that wonderful guy. I'm as tried and as gay as a daisy in May. A clear 
cliche coming true. I'm bromidic and bright as a moon happy night pouring light on the dew. I'm as corny as Kansas in August, high as a flag on the 4th of July. If you'll excuse an expression I use, I'm in give us an answer, I want to impress you with three things. First, you are a civilian and you don't have to go. Second, this is a very dangerous mission and there's no guarantee that you'll survive or that it will do any good. Third, that it might do a great good. It might be the means of turning the tide of the war in this area. Yeah, I understand all these things. Are you ready to give us your answer? Yes, I am. My answer must be no. When a man faces death, he must weigh values very carefully. He must weigh the sweetness of his life against the thing he has to die for. The probability of death is very great for both of us. I know that island well, Lieutenant Cable. And uh, I'm not certain that I believe that what you ask me to do is, is that we're asking you to help us lick the Japanese. It's as simple as that. We're against the Japanese. I know what you're against. What are you for? When I was 22, I thought the world hated bullies as much as I did. I was foolish. I killed one. I was forced to flee to an island. Since then, I have asked no help from anyone or any country. I have seen these bullies multiply and grow strong. And the world sat by and watched. Oh, the hell with this, Debec. Let's be honest. Aren't you just a guy in love with a girl and you're putting her above everything else in the world? Yes. I do care about my life with her more than anything else in the world. It is the only thing that is important to me. This I believe in. This I'm sure of. This I have. I cannot risk to lose it. Good day, gentlemen. He's an honest man, but he's wrong. Of course we can't guarantee him a better world if we win. Point is, we can be sure it'll be worse if we lose, can't we? 
Well, can't we? No, I don't know. What should I do now, Captain Brackett? Go back to my outfit tonight? Why don't you take a couple of days off and unwind? Unwind? Sure. Take a boat. Go fishing. Boat. <laughs> Escape Bali High when she call you. Hey, are you guys with the boar's tooth ceremonial? You know her. Yes, you go with them, big dealer. Lutalin, you come with me. Will you get your carcass out of here? He's going with me. Which way is it? All right, come on. but in that net, you know, Lieutenant. Place is loaded, ain't it? Well, ain't it? No comment.
That's known as hot coal. Come on. Now for the cut. I'm not going to wait around for that. What's this all about? You wait. There's nobody around here. You wait, Lutalin. What's going on, Mary? What? You like? French name, but she no French girl. She talk a niece, like me. We are very pretty people, no? Liat nice daughter, no? Make nice wife. Speak English? Only few words. She talked French. Francais. Je parle Francais. Un peu. Moi aussi. Un peu. <laughs> Afraid of me? No. Ave Fu Po? No. You're just a kid. How did an innocent kid like you get mixed up with Bloody Mary? Cette vieille femme, votre amie? Ma mère. Your mother? Bloody Mary really is your mother. 
That's why she's been looking me over like that. It's the boat, all right. Oh, let them wait. I touch your hand and my arms grow strong. Like a pair of birds that burst with song. My eyes look down at your lovely face. And I hold the world. Starlight, are you warmer than winds of June? Are the gentle lips you gave me gayer than laughter? Are you sweeter than music? Are you angel and lover? Heaven and earth are Girl, that 
that I love. She thinks I'm a wonderful guy. Oh, imagine leaving all of this wonderful champagne. Mm. You have some, too. It, it's such a waste. Here, here is another bottle. This is how it feels Living on a hillside Here we are, just like two old married people are. Our guests have gone home, and we're alone. This is what I need. This is what I've longed for. Someone young and smiling here upon my My mother says we have nothing in common, but she's wrong. We have something very important in common, very much in common. Yes, we are both in love. Yes, but more than that, I've had enough. We're the same kind of people, fundamentally. You and me. We appreciate things. We get enthusiastic about things. It's really quite exciting when two people are like that. We're not blasé. You know what I mean? Yes. We are both knuckleheads, cockeyed optimists. I hear the human race is falling on its face. It hasn't very far to go. Telling me a bill and telling me it just ain't so. I could say life is just a bowl of jello and appear more intelligent than smart. But I'm stuck like a dope with a thing called hope and I can't get it out. I, I have a surprise for you. Oh. No, stay there. Oh. oh! Why, you're the cutest things I ever saw in my whole life. <laughs> what are your names? You probably can't understand a word I'm saying, but oh my goodness, you're cute. Nelly, I want you to meet Gana and Jerome. Gana and Jerome. Nelly. Nelly? Nelly? <laughs> and it's only Vic. Bonsoir, Nelly. Bonsoir, Nelly. Bonsoir, Nelly. Aren't they adorable? Those big black eyes staring at you out of those sweet little faces. <laughs> Are the Henrys? They're mine. Uh, oh, of course they are. They look exactly like you, don't they? <laughs> Where do you hide their mother? She's dead, Nelly. Emil, they are yours. Yes, Nelly. I'm their father. And, and their mother was a... Polynesian. She was beautiful, Nelly. And charming, too. And you loved her. I want you to know I have no apologies. I came here as a young man. I lived as I could. Of course. But I have not been selfish. 
No woman ever hated me or tried to hurt me. No, no woman could ever want, want to hurt you, Emil. What time is it? I have promised to get that jeep back. Oh, oh, this is awful. Oh, what, 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 just look at the time. Please, Nelly, wait. I, I'll drive you home. Oh, you'll do no such thing. But anyway, I couldn't leave the jeep here. I, I've got to get it back. Don't I... go now, Nelly. Don't go yet, please. Oh, I... well, I, I have to go. Yes, this, this is, this is just terrible. I, I won't be able to face the girls in the hospital as it is. I... You can't imagine the way they look at you when you come in late. Yes, Nelly. I'll call you, Emil. I'll come by tomorrow. Yes. Nelly. Oh, no. Oh, dear. There are those awful rehearsals for Thanksgiving Day. I'm teaching them a dance, and they want to rehearse night and day. But after that, thank you for tonight, Emil. I had a wonderful time. It was the nicest party, and you were a perfect host. Goodbye. Nelly, I... I... Please, Emil, please stay here. Please don't come to the jeep, please. I love you. Do you hear me? I love you. And I love you too. Honestly, I do. Please let me go. Oh, please let me go.
Jacques Barre want to marry Liat. He asked again last night. You mean that old French planter you told me about, the one you despise? You can't let her marry a man like that. This white man too and very rich. I don't care. You can't let her marry him. Okay, then you marry her. Lou Talon, you have good life here. I am rich. Since war, I make $2,000. War go on, I make maybe more. Give all the money to you and Liat. You know how to work. I work for you. All day long, you and Liat play together. Make love. Talk happy. No think about Philadelphia. It's no good. Happy talk, keep talking, happy talk. Talk about things you like to do. You got to have a dream. If you don't have a dream, how you gonna have a dream come true? Talk about the moon floating in the sky, looking like a lily on a lake. Talk about a bird learning how to fly, making all the music he can make. Talk about things you like to do. You got to have a dream. If you don't have a dream, how you gonna have a dream come true? Talk about the star looking like a toy, peeking through the branches of a tree.
Hi, Bill. Hello, sir. How's it going? Just fine, sir. What do you think of it? Oh, it looks pretty good. I guess we'll get opened all right. I'm sorry, I can't go on. Oh, sure you can, Miss Forbush. You're the whole show. I'm sorry, Luther. I don't know what's the matter with me. I... What's the matter? Well, sir, w w would you take care oh, of her, I'm, please? I'm, I'm so sorry. Please excuse me. It's nothing honest. It's really it's nothing. I, I don't... All right, all right. Let's go. Come on. Back to the deck. Get them weights. Let's dance. Come on. Okay. Pitch, kick, and scissors. Pitch, kick, and scissors. A transfer? Yes, please. To any other island but this one. Miss Forbush, I don't want to pry into your affairs, but whatever is bothering you is some personal thing, of course. But I wonder if you realize just how unimportant it is. Unimportant? Yes and how important you are at this particular time. I mean the Thanksgiving Follies. Why, you're the star, the choreographer, the whole spirit of the thing. I don't think a little show like this is very important. And that's just where you're wrong. Miss Forbush, up to now in this war, our side has been having a merciless beating in two hemispheres. And nobody's going to be going home until that situation is reversed. Now, it may take a long time before we can get any big operation underway. Before the boys here get off this island. They're lonesome, homesick boys. And no matter how tough they talk, don't you think they're not looking forward to this little show, as you call it? This isn't a little show, Miss Forbush. This is a big show. <laughs> doll is as dainty as a sparrow her figure is something to applaud where she's narrow she's narrow as an arrow and she's broad oh, where a broad should be broad
60 inches high. someone to think of me tonight. I appreciate it, Luther. You don't know how much. Miss Forbush, I would like to have you know that that I consider you the most wonderful woman in the entire world, even including the fact that you're an officer, and, and I just can't go on being such a heel as to let you think I thought of giving you those flowers. Oh, but you did give them to me, and no. I... No. Here's the note that came with them. matter, Nellie, the nurse? Joe Cable. Having diplomatic difficulties with France? Joe, who let you out of the hospital? Me, I'm okay. Come Nelly? on. Nellie, are you ready? Oh, Bill. Uh, Bill, would you wait just a minute, please? Sure. You're trying to get over to Valley High. That little girl you told me about. I've got to. All the time I've been in the hospital with that darn malaria. I haven't been able to see anything but her face. I love her and... What kind of a guy am I anyway? I love her and yet I said I couldn't marry her. And I don't understand myself. I marry her and stay here and... You're just far away from home, Joe. We're both far away from home. But it doesn't make sense. Oh, yes, it does. I guess it does anyway. I guess people like us... Well, we just have to go back to where we belong. What about that girl of yours back in Philadelphia? 
my girl back home I'd almost forgot a blue-eyed kid I liked her a lot We got engaged Both families were glad And I was told by my uncle and dad That if I were clever and able They'd make me a part of a partnership Cable, cable And cable How far away Philadelphia, PA Princeton, MJ How far are they? Coconut palms and banyan trees and coral sands and Tompkins. Lieutenant Cable? No, Joe, stay. Stay, please. I've been meaning to call you, Emil. You have asked for a transfer. Why? What does it mean, then? Uh, uh, I'll explain it to you tomorrow, Emil. No, now. What does it mean, Ellie? It means that I can't marry you. Do you understand? I I can't marry you. Because of my children. Oh, not because of your children. They're sweet. It is their Polynesian mother then. Their mother and I. Yes. I can't help it. It isn't as if I could give you a good reason. I... There is no reason. This is emotional. This is something that's born in me. It is not. I do not believe this is born in you. Well, then why? Why do I feel the way I do? All I, all I know is I, I can't help it. I can't help it. Joe? Joe, explain how we feel. Joe! Nelly. Bill! Bill! Nelly. Bill, can we go now? Please? makes her talk like that. Why do you have this feeling, you and she? I do not believe it is born in you. I do not believe it. It's not born in you. It happens after you're born. You've got to be taught to hate and fear. You've got to be taught from year to year. It's got to be drummed in your dear little ear. You've got to be carefully taught. You've got to be taught to be afraid of people whose eyes are oddly made and people whose skin is a different shade. You've got to to be carefully taught. You've got to be taught before it's too late, before you are six or seven or eight, to hate all the people your relatives hate. 
You've got to be careful, Todd. You've got to be careful, Todd. You got the right idea, Debeck. Live on an island. Yes, sir. If I get out of this thing alive, I'm not going back there. I'm staying here. All I care about is right here. Yes. So, when all you care about is here, this is a good place to be. When all you care about is taken away from you, there is no place. all aboard, sir. We loaded it while it was still dark. You better wait a while yet before you take off. Above all, this must look like a casual routine flight. Well, there's still plenty of time to change your mind. Well, uh, well, maybe you might need an extra man. 
seem like an interesting project, and I... What's the matter, Lieutenant? You feeling sick or something? Look, if you don't like the idea, we'll just forget it. I'll go back to the baggage compartment. Just pretend you never saw me. I'll kill him. Now, Lieutenant, if I thought you were going to take this attitude, I wouldn't have volunteered my services. How do you like this character? I'm going to have you court-martial for this, Phyllis. You better take it easy. I'm going to ride you out of the Navy. You better take it easy. Do you realize that this is a secret mission of I the Yellow Court? I realize mission, and I'm going to keep the mission. I'm going to keep back there, will you? down about there. Well, get him out of there. Use anything you need. We'll send in a destroyer if necessary. Aye, aye, sir. The Admiral says go all out. Sit down here. Get back. 
I can set down anywhere. I'll take it. This is a black day for the Navy. A black, black day. How much did you say this cost, Bill? It's estimated at $600,000, sir. Did you hear that? That's what your little stunt today cost the taxpayers. Six hundred hundred thousand dollars. What are you grinning about? I was just thinking about my uncle. Remember my uncle I was telling you about? He used to tell my old man I'd never be worth a dime. Excuse me, sir. Phyllis, you've been striking for the brig ever since you hit this island. And today, you finally made it. Because Captain Brackett and I are going to throw the book at you. Sir, uh, may I barge in? My co-pilot and I, sir, we've been sort of kicking this thing around, and well, we feel that Luke, well, Bill is here, down in that rubber boat with all the airplanes buzzing around him, caused sort of a diversionary action. It made it a lot easier for us to land Cable and the Frenchman without being seen. In fact, it turned out to be an awful lucky break for us, sir. What do you want me to do? Give this guy a gold medal? I don't want no gold medal, Captain. But, uh... But I could use a little more um, freedom, a little room to swing around in, if you know what I mean, if you get the picture. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get the hell out of here! Come in, General. Captain, Captain! General, come in. This is the Frenchman. Do you hear me? This is Kennel. Go ahead, Frenchman. This is our first chance to send news to you. We have made contact to the former friends of mine. We are set up quarters in a very nice hole in a rock. No room, but a lovely view. We can see right down into the bottleneck. First, the weather. Rain clouds over Bougainville, the treasuries, Choiselle, New Georgia. We expect rain in this region from 9 o'clock to 2 o'clock. Oh, 0900 to 1400. Oh, my friend Joe corrects me. Oh, 0900 to 1400. You must not expect from us any regular communication. There are hundreds of Japanese in this region. It will be necessary to constantly change our quarters. And now our military expert, Joe. All you Navy, Marine, and Army pilots write this down. Surface craft. 19 troop barges headed down the bottleneck. Speed about 11 knots. Ought to pass Bonica at about 20 hundred tonight. Escorted by heavy warships. As for aircraft, 22 bombers. Job. Betty. A bottle of beer says I get went the first at 0600. Yeah. 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 Now yeah. 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 about time. There we'll ought to be some yeah. way to knock hey, off. Wait for us. Close. That's all for now. Good luck. Well, how can those guys stick it out for two weeks? Yeah. Everybody thought they'd be dead pigeons in a couple of days. I tell you, those two guys are doing us a lot of good. That Frenchman reported 40 bombers north of Munda. We took off and 40 bombers right in the nose. Boom, boom. How do those guys keep alive up there? The enemy's all around. How do they do it? That Frenchman knows these jungles around here like the palm of his hand. He's a hunter, see? All I know is they changed the whole set up here. I think we got the Japanese on the run. That's what the Frenchman said. <laughs> well, is it my lead? Your yeah. Lead? See, come on, come on. I got plenty on this. Yeah. Listen carefully, please. Ceiling today unlimited. 33 fighters, zeros, have moved in from Bougainville. Their course is approximately 0 to 3 degrees true. I'm certain heavy bombers will follow. I think something big is afoot. That's all I have time for now. Joe and I must change our position immediately. Planes are directly overhead. Two only, but they're looking for us, I think. 
They know about where we are. I will try to get back to you later. Good luck. They got us pretty well pinpointed. Staying here. In a few minutes, uh, it will be dark enough to run. No, I think we're right. It looks like they're going all out. Even these planes. Stop looking for us. They're going away. Let's make a run for it. And, and we have a lot of fighter pilots over in the ward, and, and they keep talking about a Frenchman. The Frenchman said this, and the Frenchman said that, and I was just wondering if the Frenchman they're talking about could be my Frenchman. Yes, Miss Forbush, it is. I couldn't tell you before, but... Then he is behind enemy lines. With Lieutenant Cable. Hello, this is Emil Beck. Please listen to me carefully. I haven't much time. My message today must be brief and sad. Lieutenant Cable... My friend Joe died a few minutes ago. I will never know a finer man. I wish he could have told you the news. The Japanese are pulling out. There is great confusion here. My guess is that the enemy will try to evacuate troops from Cape Esperance tonight. This is the opportunity we've been waiting for. Make the most of it, my friends. You may not hear from me again. They are coming back. They're right above me. Is that all? Is that all? Can't you get them back? Canada Frenchman, Canada Frenchman. Come in, Frenchman. Sorry, sir, he's cut off. How far away? Philadelphia, PA. Poor Joe Cable. Captain Brackett. Do you think there's a chance I'll ever see Emil de Beck again? There's a chance. Of course there's a chance. I didn't even know he was going. Of course not. How could he tell you? Now, don't blame Emil de Beck. He's okay. He's a wonderful guy. Oh. He has got a chance, hasn't he, Bill? Of course, there's always a chance. Come back so I can tell you something. I know it counts now. Just you. All those other things. The woman you had before. Her color. What, what piffle. I, what a pinhead I was. Come back so I can tell you. Oh, don't die before I can tell you. All that matters is us. Being together. That's all. If you think of what you said to me that day, you can stay alive, Emil. I know you can. Think of what you said.
Please, Miss Ness. Where is Miss Helen Cable? Who are you? I am mother of Liat. Who? Liat. She will marry no one but Miss Helen Cable. Oh, oh my darling. Captain Brackett, sir. Down the beach this way. Thank you, sir. That's all. I beg your pardon, sir. Can I speak to you a moment, sir? Who is it? Billis, sir. Luther Billis? Yes, Billis. What is it? We're moving out now. I know, sir. Stupot, the professor, and me was wondering if anything is being done about rescuing the Frenchman off that island. We hereby volunteer for such a project. A triple diversionary activity, like I done to get him on there. You could, uh... You could drop us in three rubber boats on three different sides of the island. Confuse them out of their minds. Get the picture? That's very fine, Billis, but you're too late. Operation Alligator is underway. Landings were made on a bunch of Japanese-held islands during the night and early this morning. Marie Louise Island was the first one they hit. How about that French one? Did they get him? Is he alive? We don't know. Lieutenant Buzz Adams flew up there to find out. But it would be just too bad if a part of this huge operation couldn't have saved one of the two guys who made it all possible. The big ones are battleships. And uh, the little ones are uh, destroyers. They're moving out, you see, because, well, there's been a big change. They won't be around here much anymore. Just off and on. A few of us. Did you understand anything I said? Vous ne comprenez pas? Oui, oui, nous comprenons. Oui. Now, while I'm down at the hospital, you've got to promise me to mange everything. Everything that's put before you on the table. Sir? Lay table. Sir? Lee table? Sur la table. Oh, sir la table. Merci. Jerome, come back here and sit down. Assez, yay, vous. Now you have to learn to mind me when I talk to you and, and be nice to me, too. Because I love you very much. Je t'aime. Je vous aime. Now, mangez. Chantez, Lally. Mm, I will not sing that song. You don't. <laughs>
Welcome to the Cinemax Trivia Quiz. Here's where you can test your knowledge of the movies and the stars you'll be seeing this month on Cinemax. Here's question one. In the science fiction classic, The Day the Earth Stood Still, Billy Gray plays a young boy who befriends spaceman Michael Rennie. I'd like to get inside that ship, see how it works. What do you think makes it go? Well, a uh, highly developed form of atomic power, I should imagine. I thought that was only for bombs. No. No, it's for lots of other things, too. What hit TV series of the 50s and 60s is Billy Gray known for? Question two. Alec Guinness commands an all-star cast in this month's four-star choice. The bridge over the connection does Guinness have with the film's director, David Lean? Question three. In another Cinemax four-star choice, from here to eternity, Frank Sinatra won an Oscar for his dramatic role as Montgomery Cliff's army buddy. Look, first we hit a few bars, see? Then we go to a place of which I am a member, the new Congress Club. Girls. You got any prejudices against girls? That's what I thought. Can you name the film that earned Sinatra another Oscar nomination? Ready for the answers? Question one. Billy Gray played Robert Young's son, Bud Anderson, in TV's Father Knows Best. Question two. Alec Guinness starred for director David Lean in two other blockbusters, Lawrence of Arabia and Dr. Zhivago. And finally, here's question three. With over 50 movies under his belt, singer Frank Sinatra won an Oscar nomination for The Man with the Golden Arm. Well, that's all for now, but watch for more questions about the movies and the stars you'll be seeing on Cinemax in the next edition of the Cinemax Trivia Quiz. You're tuned to the exciting world of Cinemax. Our feature presentation will continue following this brief intermission.